both eyes on you and Copenhagen Wolves. As... Wow, have they already started? Whoops. There was nobody on the server a few moments ago. That is my bad. Wow, that really started fast. So, is this actually live? It looks like it's live. Okay, so, it looks like Vikings won the won the knife round, but then lost the first pistol round. As Colon. Is that actually Colon? I think it is. And we see RV. It's now going to be a 4 versus 4 right now. Obviously, the CTs have a huge advantage on this map. So, winning that pistol round for the terrorist side is always a huge thing. Although, Colon's going to pick up another kill. He's only got one HP left, but he's got that Mac 10 still in hand. Mac 7. As uh, RV, he's going to take down one. He's switching over to the pistol. It's now way 2 versus 3, with both Chris and Colon having no health. Seriously, if you even breathe on them, funny. In fact, people could go out and get a, a flashbang kill on these people right now. In fact, someone should go do that. Just pull out flashbangs and go for a flashbang kill. Bomb has been planted. As the bomb goes down, Colin looking for another kill. He will pick it up. Lovely headshot. That shotgun's easily paid for itself so far. As Chris, it's another headshot. Holy shit. Are they really going to do this? Two versus three with no health. As RV hits one. What is Colon trying? He's going to go for it. He has more than enough money to do so. He's going to take down the headshot. Is he really going to get this defuse? He is. That looks like he's going to go off. No, the bomb goes off. And that is going to be two to nil. But that was a very good... Eco round coming out from Vikings, especially from Colon, picking up those four kills with that to shotgun. And you can see the amount of money he's gained because of that move. Uh, so we're following Beck. Beck going on the outside. It's got another eco round. Colon's brought another shotgun. That shotgun is so deadly if you know how to use it. And yes, eyes on you are a huge underdog. We see the greys going out, taking down RV. Or RV taking one out. And RV picks up a nice three piece for himself, leaving it all up to Colon and Crazy. Crazy picks up a crazy headshot, leaving him in a two versus four right now. And it looks like they're going through heaven. They want to go for an A-bomb plant here. Uh, they will take down Colon. They'll get a very easy bomb plant here for that extra money. And that is going to be 3-0 to nil in favour of Silver Forge. But now the Vikings, they have weapons. They want lots of weapons. And obviously, in a game like this, weapons is always a good thing. In a game where you shoot people in the face, having guns is a handy way of doing it. Uh, so we're following DR. I'm not sure what his actual name is. Oh, is he Hundler? He's going to take down one, but he's taking a lot of damage on his way through the outside. As this is mostly equal, but Frost is going to put it surely in the advantage of the CTs at the moment. As we're seeing crazy. He's hoping to do some crazy move here. As Chris is going to take that one. Making it into a 3 versus 4. As crazy picks down another one. And that was a little bit silly there coming out from Hundle Art. Especially with how much health he had. Smokes are coming out. So it looks like they want to go for an A bomb plant right now. As RV is going to spam through that smoke. As Percy's going to pick up two kills there, leaving it into a one versus one. And this round is absolutely crucial because of if RV can clutch this. Is he? No, he isn't. He's not going to clutch it. Going to be a very easy defuse. But if he could have clutched it, it would have put Vikings onto an eco. But luckily, it doesn't. And that is going to be three to one. 
as we do see that Silver Forge, they should have enough money to be able to buy up, even with Casper being very low on funds. Chris spamming through that smoke, making it a five versus. Has it crashed or a pause? I hope it's crashed. Well, I hope it's a pause. But yes, as in Vikings. I don't know, I've seen a few of their players around, but obviously we all know who Colon is. Colon, the Norwegian, not the Danish. At least I think that's the actual Colon I'm talking about. Let's have a quick check. Oh no, he's Danish. I thought he was Norwegian. But either way, Colon being the old 1.6 player who's recently known for his map hacking like ability with the AWP, and also known for a you know, kicking ass. Yep, as in whatever match the official one isn't casting, I'll be casting that one. Because <laughs> there is also an official stream going on right now. I'm not sure what they're casting right now, but there's an official stream going on. It's like gaming dot gaming DK. As yeah. Still paused. At least I hope it's a pause. <laughs> but either way, things are looking pretty good for Silver Forge right now. As in, they're 3-1 up on a very CT biased map, and if they could just pick up two more rounds in this half, they'd have done the job that they need to. Obviously, whoever wins this match has to go up against... Give me a sec. I'm trying to find things to talk about while it's paused. <laughs> oh, nope. Back. We're back. We're back. We're back. As RV is going to pick up one kill. Take it down, colon. Like, the bullet must have been, like, mid-air before that pause. As it is going to be a 4 versus 5 very quickly, although DR has been knocked down to very low HP values. As DR is... Rugger? Vimo? RV is Vimo. DR is Dugger. Frost tank is Frost. Casper is someone. And Hunden. Yeah. Because people don't actually use their actual name in to make it easy for cast casters. As it is going to be a 4 versus 5 right now. We see Chris going to get a very easy kill onto... Rugger? Or Writer? One of the two. Might be a Writer. As uh, we do see crazy. Coming up as RV gets a very easy come to Chris, who was just playing a little bit too aggressive there with a grenade in hand. We see it looks like they got complete control of the ramp area as Casper's gonna take down Beck, but Percy's still on the bomb side. He's kinda being pincered from all sides. And he will get eventually taken down by Crazy is there to get the pick up. We're gonna switch over to Crazy as Hunden decides he doesn't like life anymore. The bomb plant goes down and Frost, it's a lovely headshot, making it 4-1 to one in favour of Silver Forge. Obviously Vikings were the top seed in their group, having beaten all their teams. They beat Speedclick, Bip and Little Lions. And in fact they've beaten Speedclick twice, but now they're in round number 2 of the losers bracket after losing to OX Zone. See the flashes are coming out. As crazy. He's hoping to go crazy. As this is going to be another eco coming out from the CT side. And this is probably going to give the terrorists the round that they need. As Casper's going to pick up the last uh, kill there, leaving it all up to Beck and Chris. And Chris, he does have a shotgun. We all know how good those shotguns are. And I do like he didn't fire that. He's not giving he's not giving away the fact that he has a shotgun. As we see that the T's, they're trying to go through the outside. 
and he's going to be walking right past the terrorist right there, and he's going to get taken out in the head. And blood and brain matter going everywhere, and that is going to be 5 to 1 in favour of Slurberforge. And if you're a Viking right now, not a lot of plundering is going on. As people are actually talking in chat now. Casper is Rugger. RV is Vimo. DR is Writer. Okay, that's cool. As we do see, Beck will take down Writer, making it a 4 versus 5 right now. Although this is still an eco, this is a double eco coming out from the Vikings. As it looks like they want to go through to heaven. And in fact, the A-bomb site is right now completely clear. Beck being forced back by a hail of gunfire. That's crazy. Doing a crazy little move there, but it doesn't quite work out for him. As Frost is going to pick up two kills. Vima is going to pick up one of his own. And that's going to leave it all up to Percy and Colon. Colon does have an AK-47 in hand. As... Obviously, they can't see the X-ray like we can, as Percy is a nice shot there onto Frost. As the bomb will go down. Percy, we're going to switch over to him, as he's going to actually pick up an AK-47. I'm not sure what he was doing there, though. He got an AK-47, he could have moved back, but instead he charged in for some weird reason. But either way, that is going to be 1-6 to six in favour of the Silver Forge. And they, even if they lose the rest of the rounds in this half, they are truly ahead right now. I'm going to go very quickly. Ah, so DR is because his name's Dennis Ryder. Okay, that makes sense. It's awesome when you have people in chat who can tell me things. <laughs> It means I can sound knowledgeable without actually knowing anything. Actually, that's a good point, scoreboard. Because it's already been seven rounds and I've got to show it. But either way, Crazy is going to take down Writer, making it into a five versus four. As you see, the AWP is out on... Damn it, who's Casper? Is Casper just called Casper? As Casper picks up two kills there, lovely frags. But Crazy is still around. But Frost is going to take him down, making it into a two versus three. But there's one coming up from behind. But Frost is also going to take him down, leaving it all up to Percy. Can Percy clutch this out for his team? His team really needs this round. And really, the issue I'm seeing here is not only are Server Forge out aiming their opponents. They're not playing this map how you should. This is a very defensive-based CT map, as it is going to be an A-bomb plant. Percy is completely smoked out. His name is Casper in real life. Oh, okay. Oh, Rugger. Yeah, Casper's Rugger. I need to get, like, a... a cheat sheet next to me, like, this is what that name's called. Although, to be fair, to do it with a Danish scene would probably be a full-time job. The Danish scene is not known for being very stable. As in anyone who like sticks together for more than five minutes is considered like an old team. <laughs> it makes the British scene look like it's uh, you know this the bane of stability. As we do see Percy does manage to save that weapon there, getting a nice kill at the end. As let's a quick look at how the scores are going, and we do see there is Vimo, or RV as he's shown here, who's going absolutely mental. Going 15 and 4 and really carrying his team through this entire through this game. That's not to say his team aren't doing that well. And surprisingly, Colon's only on 4 to 6. Uh, Colon is gonna get a nice headshot there, but not gonna get anything else, so this is gonna be another buyout coming out from the CT side. We're gonna switch over to another player who isn't dead. As it's going to be a 4 versus 4 right now. As Crazy is going to equal things out for his team, making it a 3 versus 3, but again, we're seeing just a little bit too much aggression. 
giving Hunden a very easy headshot kill onto Chris. See Frost, he is going to take down Percy. He got headshotted himself, but it isn't going to matter as the bomb plant's going to go down, leaving it all up to Crazy. Ooh, we just gave way to position and he will get taken down because of it. As that is going to be 8 to 1 in favour of Serve Forge. And remember, this is a best out of one of the losers bracket, so Vikings are on the verge of going home. As in, obviously, if you lose this, you'll get a top 12 position. I think. As we do see that right is going huge. This A push is just working out brilliantly. As Crazy will also go down, leaving it all up to Colon. He is going to get a nice dink, but a dink is not quite enough. As that sounds like something that a little kid would say. As that is going to be 9 to 1 and... We are going to see another buyout from Vikings, but even if they win the rest of these rounds, it's not good enough. Because as we've seen so many times, this is a CT bias map. As and again, for those of you who watch this regularly, you, I might sound like a broken record, but 1 to 9 is not a score you want on this map when you're playing the CT. As we see Percy and RV trade, and it is now going to be a 2 versus 3. The smokes have come out, so it looks like they want to go for an A-bomb side push right now. They're kind of on the A-bomb side, but not quite got control of it. As we cast it, he's just taken down one. Using that orb shot to nail back to the wall. As I like that smoke. Leaving it all basically up to Colon, but Colon, he knows how to play this game. We've seen him do so many awesome things in 1.6. As Ryota is trying to spam, the grenades also going to come through. As Colon, he is going to pick up the last two kills, making it 2-9. to nine, As Vikings finally pick up another one. Obviously, both these two teams were, were the top-rated teams in their group, I think. Give me a sec, I can actually check that. So I have stats. Yep, both of them beating everybody in their groups. Up until Silverforge lost to Eyes on You, as we just saw. And Vikings lost to OX Zone, 2-1. to one. And right now, maybe that loss has taken its toll on them, because although they defeated Speed Click, in the first loser's bracket round. We see Crazy will take down the Vimo. Making it now 4 versus 5. But again, even if the CTs pick up all the rest of these rounds, I don't see them coming back unless they have some amazing terror side play. And that is not the kind, someone should always be looking there. Allowing Hunden to just walk through a garage, not good. As we see Crazy, he will pick up one, but it's now going to be a three versus two. It's going to be all up to Chris and Colon. Chris will take down one. He's going to take down two, leaving it all up to Frost. Frost. He's in a one versus two situation right now. He's going to pick up one. It's now all up against Colon. Colon up in heaven. He's spamming through the wall. He will take him down. And that is going to be three to nine, but way closer than it should have been. Not covering the correct areas on A, no information being shown out. You're just... I'm guessing there's some kind of communication problem going on with the Vikings at the moment. That's the only thing that makes any sense.
Uh, so we see Frost Tank. He is going to go down to Chris. Now making it a four versus five, but the CT, the T's, they're rushing out through. Um, we see Colon picking up one. He's not going to pick up a second one though, making it a three versus four. He does get the trade. Casper getting that nice orb shot. Hunden getting a lovely headshot there onto Percy, making it a three versus three right now. Can the Vikings? The Vikings, they need to win this round. Chris, he is going to take down Ryter, who he had no business winning that round, but Ryter completely missed his shots. As it's now, we do see they have managed to get the bomb down onto B, but they're not quite in the position able to take it out. Crazy's been forced back to the flash, and that grenade should do a little bit of damage there to Casper. Casper's gonna take up shots to the face. Um, Flash shots to the face, but it's going to leave it into a 2 versus 2. Make that a 1 versus 2. Brilliant! Almost hitting the third one. And Beck is now in a 1 versus 2 situation. We're going to switch over to him. This is so difficult to uh, counter right now. As he is trying to take down two people with AK-47s. And he's just going to rotate away. He knows that they do not have the economy to uh, go up against this. So he's just going to be giving this round away. And that is going to be... 10 to 3 in favor of the server forge. Terrorists win. Beck is going to get a nice kill from across the map, but it isn't going to be enough. As Beck, they can't even force a buy right now because they need the money for the last round, and I don't know how they can come back from this situation. As in, for them to come back from the situation, we're going to need to have to see the best T-side play we've ever seen from any team. As in, I've, you know, I've seen comebacks from on that side happen, but they're rare. Like, unicorn kind of rare. As we see Casper, he will take down the first player. As crazy, we'll get one trade back. Chris is trying to make anything happen. As Vimo will take down Beck, leaving it into a two versus four. Colon and Chris both have a weapon in hand, but it's still a two versus four. They have no armor, no grenades. And Silverforge still have 50 seconds to play with. We see Chris, he needs to hit something amazing, but he's gonna lose that battle. And he's also going to get completely smoked out. We see there's one left on the B-bomb site. Colon will hit the headshots. He will hit the second one. He's now in a 1 versus 2. And the bomb is on A. They were trying to get through to B, but things went wrong. Colon's going to dodge the first flash. He's going to take that one. Take down two. Picking it up a 4-piece. Clutching that round out. Absolutely epic. Absolutely, as much as this team is failing right now, that was brilliant play from Colon. Absolutely perfect aim. Absolutely perfect, perfect. And that was a round they so desperately needed to win. I was not expecting him to pull that out, but pull that out he did. And he didn't get arrested for it either. Uh, as we see Frost going for a little bit of spam there. As again, we're seeing this a very aggressive play from the CTs. And this is not a map you go aggressive on. As Colon will take down Casper, making it a 4 versus 4. Make that 4 versus 3. As Crazy will get the trade, but the trade is not going to be good enough. Although that will be. Beck getting a very clean kill. Leaving it up to Percy. Percy will go down. Beck's down in a 1 versus 2. Vikings need to win this round. In fact, they've needed to win all the rounds 5 rounds ago. As they don't have the bomb. Beck has the bomb. But he's playing aggressive. He had the bomb in this. He had the bomb in lobby. Why was he playing aggressive there? Why? <laughs> but either way, that is going to be the first half score of 11 to 4.
And we're either going to need to see some terrible play coming out from the server forge on the CT side, which I do not see happening. Or Vikings do the most amazing epic T side ever shown on this map ever. Uh, Vima is going to pick up the first frag, and that is not a good start. That's crazy. He's going to get the trade. Percy's going to pick up one as well. But then he switches at the wrong moment. And that's now going to be a 3 versus 2. We see they're going onto the B bomb site right now. But we see Crazy waiting for the rotation. He will take down Ryter. Leaving it all up to Ka uh, Rugger. Rugger will also go down as Crazy picks up three nice kills there on this, eco on this pistol round. And that was the start that they needed. Vikings should now be able to bring it to a 7-11 to game, which means they're still terribly behind, but they're not going to be quite as behind as before. As... See the smokes, and did that smoke actually land? Because it was a very... liberally thrown smoke. As we see, Conan's going to hit one headshot. Hit a second! And in fact, that smoke did land. That was a pretty sweet smoke. As it's going to be all up to right, uh, Vimo. Vimo's only got a pistol in hand. They couldn't get a single kill. Maybe playing just a little bit too good. And that is going to be 6 to 11. As Vikings, they're going to have one more round where they're going to have a very easy anti eco. And then. Then the hard stuff starts. Now, if Vikings can win the round after that, then they should be able to accrue an economic advantage at the stage where they'll bring it to a 9 to 11. A 9 to 11, okay, although it's still hard, it is possible on this map. Ah, as Colin's gonna pick up the first frag kill. Colin's gonna pick up a second one. Colin's actually going pretty huge for his team right now, going 18 and 10. As Colin picks up another one! In fact, we're going to follow Colon because he's on the verge of an ace right now. No, he isn't. I was going to switch over to Casper. He's going up against Crazy. He's just trying to get that poke through the box. But Colon will pick up a fourth. And that is going to be 7 to 11. In favour of Silver Forge. But Vikings, they quickly win the first three rounds. And so let's have a quick look at how the scores are going. We do see that the top fragger in the game is uh, Vimo. But Colon is the second top fragger, going 20 and 10. And really, the difference isn't the top fraggers here, it's the bottom fraggers. The ones who aren't quite, ca aren't quite up to par with the rest of their team. Uh, this is going to be another eco with Colon being boosted up. He's got that AWP. We all love Colon and his AWP. Especially people in clan, in, uh, clan base. As Colon will take down the first frag. DR's going for a few frags. He's going to pick up one. But Colon's going to pick up a second one. As he's got that AWP. As, and if anyone's seen that uh, bust movie of Colon. Yeah. We know why he's good at AWP. As we see RV. Or Vimo. We'll make it a 2 versus 3. And in fact. Vikings may actually be able to almost tie this up. This has been a rather good T side here with some good aim, but again, a little bit too aggressive by Server Forge. You should not be playing aggressive on the outside on the outside area. Either that or it's just removing the advantage that the CTs get in this map. As Frost is gonna dodge that first flash. He's basically the one who has to do make everything happen. As Hunden has like no health at the moment. And then he goes down. The grenade's just a little bit too much. As Colon, he's got an orb here. I need to switch over to the pistol. Instant headshot. And that is going to be 8 to 11, with Colon picking up three nice orb frags there. Uh, for people who are wondering, in the chat, Western Wolves got second in the Gaming.DK League. With Copenhagen Wolves getting first. As we see RV. He is going to go down. Vimo not being able to go up against that AK-47 fire. As this is being a very, very bad eco round coming out from Silver Forge. Running in one by one. No cover, no nothing. Yeah. 
And I feel like Server Forge is slowly letting their victory drip away. Ah, uh, Beck is going to take him down, and that is going to be 9 to 11. As all of a sudden, this is no longer. This is no longer GG. This is now within the realms of possibility. As in, I have turned the quality down on the stream slightly because the Virgin Media don't like me streaming lots of stuff. Then they kind of make. Then they kind of turn off my stream by making it so I can't upload anything. But either way, this is going to be another eco round, and this again we're seeing very aggressive play come out from Server Forge. However, this time it seems to work with just a base aim. It's going to be a three versus four, though. Why are they doing this? Why? As it's going to be all up to Hunden. Leaving him in a 1 versus 3 with only 19 HP. Percy is going to pick up the last frag and... This is not... You know how I said it was either going to be Vikings playing the best they can or... Server Forge messing up? This is Server Forge messing up. Server Forge should not be playing this aggressive. This is not an aggressive map to play on. As we do see the Vikings, they're setting up for an, a ramp push. And you can tell by the way that they're moving, the way they're stacking up. They are very confident at the moment. They're feeling in the groove once again. However, I suppose that because of they are bringing this back, we will get more Counter-Strike, which is pretty good. And you could say that Vikings have finally joined the server. However, interestingly enough, is that Colon wasn't orping on the um, CT side. I think it was Chris who was. Gray's going to do... actually doing a little bit of damage onto Beck. As we see Froz, he's going to pick up one! Pick up two, and finally they're playing defensive, and this is how you're supposed to play this map. As it's now going to be a very fast two versus four. The smokes were okay from um, Vikings, but it weren't quite good enough. As Vimo, he's on the B bomb sites. He will get taken down by Colon. Nice warp shot there. Making it into a 2 versus 3. And Colon is trying to cover his teammate. The bomb plant will go down. As Hunden comes up from behind. Steals that AWP. And that was a pretty good round coming out from the CTs. And finally, they bring around on what's supposed to be the easiest side of this map. Which yes, this is going to be 10 to 12, a server board finally take advantage of the fact that they're supposed to be on the easier side. With Casper getting that orb. And this is going to be 12 to 10. And uh, let's follow Casper. As he's got that orb, he's going to be going up against Crazy who's been boosted up. I don't get why people boost up because that jump is not that hard to learn if you've got enough time. You just do a small little strafe jump. We're following Percy. He is going to be spamming through through the side of the wall. As the grenade comes out. As uh, Server Forge doing a lot of damage there to Colon. His feet in the wrong position. Casper picks up the... Oh. Rugga picks up the first frag. But Percy will get the trade. Making it a 4 versus 4 very, very quickly. As Colon picks up one headshot. Rushing out to the A-bomb site. Leaving it all up to Vimo and and Rugger versus Colon and Crazy. However, where's the bomb? They don't have the bomb. The bomb's in vents, I think. Oh no, the bomb is just right there next to the vent as Casper has got it covered. He picks up one kill. 
Colon has managed to pick it up. He needs to get to an ace if he wants to pick this up. Although he's going up against Vimo, who's got a pretty good idea where he is. Now he knows. They're rushing in. Colon needs to just get this bomb plant down. Easy kill for Vimo. And that... And that is going to be 13 to 10 in favour of Server Forge. And now Server Forge are taking that knife and twisting it in. They were being a little bit lackadaisy before, but finally they're playing this map how you should. Defensive, waiting for your opponents to make the move on a map that's a, that puts them in a bad position, basically. As in, again, for those of you who are just joining us, this is map number one of one in the loser's bracket round two between Server Forge and Vikings. Vikings known for having colon, Ser Server Forge known for having a lot of good Danish players who were... Recently, they actually beat Western Wolves online 2-0 in a best out of three. We see colon is being forced back. But again, I do like this play by Vikings. They're Poking, poking and prodding, they're trying to get those picks, but then Beck runs out a little bit too far, and this is going to be an A-bomb type rush. We see Hunden, he's in a good position, picking up one, two kills! Casper again, an easy third, leaving it all up to Percy. And that is going to be 14 to 10, as finally Silverforge win four rounds in a row. And what's the economy looking like for the T-side? They've still got enough to buy up, but they're now at the stage of where if they lose this round, they're putting their opponents on match point. <sighs> Someone almost got a taser kill yesterday. That's actually, I don't think I've ever seen a taser kill on LAN. As we do see, Frost takes down one. Now going to be a 3 versus 5. Make that a 2 versus 5, as this is going badly for Vikings. Now that Server Forge has pulled themselves together, the fact that Vikings are doing nothing special on this T side, as can they actually pick that up? Yes, they can. Because you do have to get worried there for a little bit moment that you can actually drop the bomb in places where you can't pick it back up. As Frost is going to take down Percy, leaving it all up to Colon, the beast, the master on Vikings. He's only got 40 seconds left. He's got five players to his kill. He's going to take down one, but not take down anymore. As that, in fact, he is the top fragger in the game, but being the top fragger, that's only this score matters. And it is currently saying a score that's very, very sad if you're a Vikings fan. Of course, if you like Server Forge, you know, if you like Server Forge, this is a pretty good result, meaning they'll be going on to round number three, where they'll be going up against, I will find out who they'll be going up against in a moment, just as soon as this round possibly finishes. As uh, Beck, he is going to pick it up. Obviously, this is match point one of five at the moment. The only thing Vikings can play for right now is overtime, and they are playing for their tournament lives. Colin's going to pick up another one onto Frost, leaving it up to 3 versus 5. We see Hunden still in Tin House. He's going to take down one. Can't take down the second, leaving it all up to Ryter. And he goes down very quickly, and Vikings, they bring one back. But that's only one of five. As we're almost hitting 100 viewers, which again, considering I haven't advertised this match, and it's kind of early in the morning, and I'm not very good at casting, this is pretty good. <laughs> Although the GOTV seems to have sorted itself out, which is pretty good. As we see, Chris is here, waiting for anyone to pop out, but Silver Forge has stopped playing aggressive. It gives Vikings a 
a lot harder time in which they need to hit their shots or put themselves into a bad position. As Ryder picks up one, can't pick up a second one, the trade coming out. As Hunden, he's waiting for them to come to hell and he's actually... He's... He might get an easy kill here. Yes, he will! Also, Percy is there to get the trade. And it, there is something important when you're with the terrorists. You should always go in groups of two or, th or more so you can always get that trade. No matter what happens, as Beck will take down Vimo, who's looking in the wrong position, leaving it all up to Frost and Rugger. As Casper will take down one, making it a two versus two. As Beck going absolutely huge, picking up two kills in a row, and that will be 15 to 12. As Vikings, they save match number two out of five. And I don't think the ESCA are doing anything at the moment. All they're stealing is just bitcoins, not viewers. Although, hang on a sec, what's this? What's this? Uh, what's the client doing now? Why does it keep opening up ESCA streams? <laughs> but either way, this is going to be round number 28. Vikings! They have forced the counter terrace onto an ego, which means you never know. The Vikings could do this comeback. They'll have as they've just quickly gone to a five versus three. We see this. The pistols are not going to be very good in this map, as Vikings are probably going to make it fifteen to thirteen. And all of a sudden, we have a game once again. As Beck is going to take down one, leaving it all up to Rugger. And Vimo. Rugger's gonna pick up a nice kill with that Deagle. And we're seeing RV. Of course, I actually, to me, RV means something completely different. A character from a book series from Darren Shan called Reggie Veggie. Who ended up becoming a vampire or something. It's a pretty good book series. But either way, that is going to be. 13 to 15 as Vikings will win that eco round and well we can see from the score that it's really Colon who's carrying his team he's taking them by their balls and dragging them through this match going 13 and 16 having a kill death ratio of 2 the second highest being 25 to 19 and for those of you who have just joined us this is Matt Map 1 of 1 in the losers bracket in the blast. As we do see this is going terribly for the Vikings, going 3 to 4. And we're all up to Chris, Percy, and Crazy. Colon has gone down. And we see Chris is hoping to pick up an extra kill there, but it's not really working. And it's just finally going to. Is this going to be one round too many for the Vikings? Well, Percy picks up two, making it into a two versus two right now. They've got the bomb, they're in the ramp area. Now, do they go... Let's see. We have one in Tin House, one outside. So they c probably could pick up a bomb plant in B. But instead, they're rotating back around to A, and there's someone waiting for them. But Percy's going to hit a... Brilliant headshot onto Frost, leaving it all up to Casper. We're going to switch over to him. Is it a 1 versus 2? Make that a 1 versus 1. This is the orb shot to win the game. He was looking for that little folk, a foot peek. He's not going to pick it up though. He does have a, he does have a defuse kit. So this is entirely possible. But this is basically for the game right now, because counter terrorists do not have enough money to buy up. And we have Casper is being silent. He misses the first shot. Switch over the pistol, but he gets it! Is there enough time? Yes, there is! This is going to be GG! Silverforge move on! Comes all the way down to a 1 vs 1 clutch. That was way closer than it should have been, but that was 16-13. to 13. Vikings!